Hello and welcome back to Chess of Blade, which I'm not sure how well the quality of this is going to be because I'm slightly doing something different with recording. Uh, but anyways, not that it might be entirely important, but um, stopping at an exotic cart that sells food from a place I can't pronounce, I pick an array of things to serve as my breakfast. Because I don't remember what we were doing last time because it's been a bit since last part, technically. Not that you guys would know because I uploaded them. <laughs> Uh, I stuff my arms with a variety of treats and munch thoughtfully while men me de men drink along with the crowd. And I know words. The finest silks from ports all over the world. Come drape yourself in the shawl of a queen. There's candy and herbs and medicines to make the sickly into the strong. Or perhaps the opposite to your foes. <laughs> okay. Buy the best vintage of our Royal Highness's favorite wine, pressed from the kingdom's best grapes. As a domestic product among all of these imported ones. Yeah, imported. I thought I said important, but imported ones. Who really cares if it's the king's favorite wine, though? Wine's only good for getting drunk. It could taste like boiled boots as long as it gets the job done. Okay. I mean, I'm pretty sure a lot of people would disagree otherwise, but okay. As I heard, though, the streets, someone suddenly bumps up against my side. Oh, excuse me. Oh, okay, just someone random. Okay. Delicate female voice comes from beside me, and I quickly turn to see a pretty girl courtesying apologetically. Does she happen to know who we are? It's very hard walking in these shoes all day, and I'm starting to get a bit wobbly. <laughs> I glance down at her shoes. Ouch, those heel are razor. Thin and obscenely tall, poor woman. I should be the one to apologize. I suppose I'm rather spoiled getting to plod around in these comfy boots all day. <laughs> a happy grin spreads on the sleigh's lips. That's my remark. Well, I mean, it might be entirely her fault for you wearing those shoes in the first place, but whatever. A happy grin spreads on the lady's lips at my remark. I can tell from her fine clothes and manners that she's one of the king's guests, not someone here to sell wares. Of course, okay. I mean, based on the outfit. <laughs> oh, by the way, I'm looking for someone. Uh, I wonder if you might have seen him. Oh, what would that be? I'm looking for someone too. What's yours look like? <laughs> Let's see. Um, he's an older gentleman with a red coat and a rather round nose and a bit on the larger side. Um, isn't that who we're looking for? I passed thoughtfully, racking my mind for a similar image to what she's describing. Come out with a blank, however, and regretfully shake my head. Okay, Don't never mind, I guess there's no one we know. I'll tell him you were looking for him if I see someone with such a physique, though. Would you? Ah, oh, I'd be most grateful. <laughs> Please tell him Celeste wants to speak with him. Celeste, is it? If you see an ungraceful oaf with. Oh, speak of the devil. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> Before I can even finish my flattering description of Arden, I spot eagerly pushing through the crowd towards me, waving a hand over his head. Oh, is he your friend? Uh, he's quite handsome. She giggles coyly, giving Arden quite the intense once over as he approaches us out of breath. <laughs> okay. Rivian! I knew you'd come out of hiding sooner or later. I mean, we're the one looking for you, Arden, but okay. He doesn't even seem to know Celeste at first, but when I pointly nudge my chin slightly in her direction, Arden glances down towards the girl. Well, please excuse me. I need to go find the pa before I get swindled by too many merchants. <laughs> Perhaps I'll see you tonight, Rivian. T okay, I imagine you're gonna be important somehow. Despite addressing her words to me, she clearly I she's clearly eyeing Arden as she drops 
No, no, the cute curtsy gracefully slipping back into the crowd. Papa, huh? Wonder if she means her real father or a thirsty widower she's ensnared between her thighs. A cute girl. Uh, you two friends? I mean, we just met, so I guess you could say maybe. We Not strangers at that point. Minutes ago, Arden. I was actually looking for you, though. I trail off figuring it's probably not the best idea to add as a meat shield against any assassins. As far as the ardent eyes light up. If I didn't bear a grudge against him, I'd find it rather cute. <laughs> Look, we're blocking traffic. Come on. So where are we going? I push his shoulder forward with one hand steering him along. We stroll forward past the stall. Your face looks a little strained, Riv. Is something bothering you? Did you buy spoiled food off one of the merchants by accident? Uh, maybe. I don't know. We bought food, that's all, as far as I know. <laughs> I hesitate, casting an uncertain glance over at Arden's Cure Sisters. Oh, I wonder if we're going to have to choose to tell them about the assassins or not. Friends' words from last night are still lurking in the back of my mind, and sharing them with someone would certainly make me feel a little more at ease. However, it's been four years since I last saw Arden. For all I know, he could have gotten even worse at keeping his mouth shut than he already no, was. No, don't oh. worry about it. There was something I did want to ask you, though. What did you do to upset the Grand Inquisitor? I don't think I've ever met a more unpleasant man in my life. <laughs> and then Arn's eyes fight and his expression is suddenly growing sheepish. Oh, him? He's even worse than you are, Riv. I thought he was going to chop my head off just for leaving my room at night. What? You mean guests aren't allowed to leave their rooms? No, they are. It's just... Well, I was just nosying around places I wasn't supposed to, probably. Oh, probably? Okay. <laughs> um, why would you even go at night? Okay. That's my other question. Well, if that's not an Arden-esque thing to do, I don't know what is. Looks a little uncomfortable, though. wonder what kind of place Linus found him don't in. Don't act anything like how a royal guard ought to, you know. Just because you're off duty for a week doesn't mean you can stir up mischief as you please. I know that. I'm older than you, Riv. You can't scold me like a kid. <laughs> oh, how wrong you are. That is very true. <laughs> the bright morning turns into a warm afternoon as we explore the market, purchasing no small amount of food and curious trinkets. For I know it, carrying around a bag made from exotic leather. Not exotic butters. For anyone who knows what the hell I'm referring to, <laughs> with a certain hint of cologne, books, and fine souvenirs tuckled inside. Tuckled? Tuck Was it tuckled? <laughs> now I'm questioning what I just said. Uh, of course, I wind up convincing Art to carry the bag. He needs to put the muscles he built from all that train to good use, after all. Sure. As a man back, sure. He seems exhilarated that we're spending time together We used like we used to. Even though he's carrying all his shit, but whatever. <laughs> but the only reason I'm enduring his company is so that I don't make myself an easy target. I will admit, it does bring back memories of happier times, but those times are long gone. Now I'm caught up in some political game that's far more important than drowning myself in nostalgia. Look, Riv! Snake Charmer! Damn! I wish I had that kind of skill. A snake charmer? Okay, that sounds interesting. <laughs> Arnold's excited voice beside me directs my attention to a man seated on a carpet nearby, surrounded by a thick circle and murmuring admirers. Let's go watch him. I bet your legs are getting sore from all this walking anyway. Excuse me. Just because I'm not a royal guardsman doesn't mean I'm out of shape. <laughs> so we're gonna see the snake person charmer. Despite my protest, I let Arn tug me over to Snake Charmer. We push our way into the audience to get a better view. Sound of the strange flute, like an instrument he's playing, seems to make the serpent before him sway and shift. It's a leathery body rising to a somewhat disconcerting, disconcerting height. Da -da -da -da. I went for a low wall, but boredom soon overcome me. Turn to search for Arda and drag him off. Arden? But why you disappear? 
It seems you're still a little careless about leaving your back exposed. Oh, well, hello, you're not Arden. So one suddenly presses against me from behind, and a low chuckle echoes in my ear. Familiar, sensual voice. The rough grasp of large hands on my shoulders. This is... No other than... What was it? What the hell are you doing here? Stalking more victims? Oh, that's rather cold, isn't it? I've been keeping an eye on you. Let's just say that much. I wonder what this guy's goal is. He's very suspicious. Even though I'm pretty sure he... That thing and... No, I doubt he's out to kill him. I doubt he is the killer. Uh, so those words alone are more than a little whenever. Oh, I won't. Ooh, I won't be surprised if somehow he was hired to make sure he doesn't get killed. I would imagine that might be the reason why Franz is keeping an eye on Tim. That's my only guess. Who is this man? If you want a few more details, you'll have to leave your friend behind for a few moments. But. The choice is yours, little kitten. Oh, do I get a choice here? After whispering those warm words against my ear, he comes back and I quickly turn to see him beckoning me with curled finger. Ooh. Ooh, do I leave? Ooh, do I leave him behind? <laughs> uh... I know I could trust either one of them, but I'm like, who do I really want to trust? <sighs> Slash also get with by the end of this playthrough. <laughs> um. Um. <laughs> I, um. Uh. Uh. Um. I, I really want to get more information, but I'm like, uh, I don't want to leave him behind. <laughs> I suck at these choices. Uh, shit. Let's, um, any meeny my mo, just got a tiger, buy a fuck it, let's go with Franz. <laughs> Much as I loathe the idea of scampering after Franz like the lost kid, he seems to think of me as I want some answers from him. Silently apologizing to Arden in my head, I weave through the crowd and follow the tall figure who waits for me to catch up before continuing on. Good. I'm glad you're being sensible. Besides, you don't really enjoy that boring guards company, do you? <laughs> you know about Arden too? He must be building quite an unflattering reputation for himself. Mm, I doubt that. I think Franz has just really got a lot of information on him. Corners of Franz's lips curl slightly upwards, his thumbs hooked casually into his pockets as we stroll towards the less popular part of the festival. His reputation is not as poor as you might think. He did get into the Royal Guard, an elite unit, through remarkably hard work and attracted quite a bit of attention. Oh? I don't know him personally, of course. I simply keep abreast of pertinent information. I, I could tell <laughs> at this point. I watch the moon from the corner of my eyes as he speaks, trying to discern anything that might reveal information about where he's from or his occupation. He's certainly tall and well-built enough to be a fighter of some kind, but his elegant speech and smooth movements do you mean to believe he's related to a noble politics Regardless, somehow? Regardless, it seems like you've been heeding my warning. I tried your bedroom door last night just to make sure it was locked. Uh, what? I should report you to the guards, you know. <laughs> Next thing, you'll be smashing through the balcony doors. Come now. Do you really want to act so callously against one of the few people who can keep you safe? I promise. I have your best interests at heart. Ah, uh, well, we'll see how far this goes. <laughs> see how far this rabbit hole leads us. She has a disgruntled look as we continue to halt in the last festival stall on the street. 
but the chattering of the bustling crowd sounds distant. You've been spouting all this nonsense and acting like some grand benefactor, but I don't have any reason to believe a word of what you say. I mean, uh, simply based on my information I got, I'm pretty sure he's fine to a certain extent. Isn't it a little Just ironic maybe? that the most disturbing encounter I've had so far has been with you? No one's pulled it's a also been pretty funny. <laughs> Except you. My, my accusation seems to bounce off Franz, who folds his arm impassively over his chest and watches me with a tilted head. End of smirk stays on his face, which can surely only mean bad things. I guess it'd be rather hypocritical for me to tell you to be on your guard around others, but not give you a reason to trust me. Hmm. A little kitten learns fast. Can you cease and desist with this kitten nonsense? <laughs> it might work on some shy maiden, but I assure you I'm nothing of the sort. Really? I could have sworn I felt your heart pounding like a little war drum when I had you pinned in my arms last night. <laughs> <laughs> However, returning to the subject at hand, there are a number of reasons I could give as to why I want to help you, but I doubt you'd believe any of them at this point. But if you want proof as to the fact that this celebration and its guests are more than they seem, I believe the occurrence I spoke of earlier will happen no later than tonight. Oh, tonight? Occurrence? Could you be any more vague? Franz struggles lightly, running a hand through his hair. <laughs> okay. You've played chess before, haven't you? You see the opponent's pieces moving, but a skilled player often masks what they're planning. The best oh, I see where... stay alive. Oh. Okay, now I see why it's called Chest of Blades. <laughs> with that little information, I'm like, uh, I see where you're going with the name Chess of Blades. Chess and the War. Makes sense now. <laughs> Keen light in his eyes suggests that he definitely knows more than he's letting on. Down, what? I wouldn't give to be a cold, calculating bastard like you right now, father. I'd see through him in a second. Then I'll reserve judgment until I see for myself what's afoot. Afterwards, I'll decide if you're a delusional pervert, or just an exceptionally well-informed one. I mean, he could easily be both. <laughs> As expected of Lord Barrison's son. I trust we'll encounter each other tonight, then. Uh, we probably will. Oh, we probably will. Steps closer, lean in to press a finger under my chin and gaze down at me with uncomfortably disconcerting eyes. Until then, stay on your toes. The most painful attacks come from the most unexpected of places. Like from you, maybe? <laughs> I glower up at Franz slightly in reply, which only serves to elect a low laugh from him as he steps past me. Ah, those eyes and sweet shivers down my spine. Well, good afternoon, my little lord. Okay. It disappears around the edge of the stall, presumably returning to the street, and I sigh quietly to myself as his footsteps fade. I don't know why, but I feel like I wasn't the victor in that conversation, even though I wasn't even aware we were in a contest. Regardless of his intentions, I don't think I'll ever get used to that man's demeanor. It's like dealing with the male escort or something. Talking a little to myself, I head back to the street, turning in the direction Franz and I had come from. When I return to the Snake Charmer's circle of admirers, I catch Arden wandering around searching for me and tell him I went off to relieve myself in some bushes. Sure. Gives me a somewhat dubious look at my excuse, but doesn't question. Well, it's none of his business, anyways. He'd probably pop a vein if I told him too much about Franz. Probably, I guess. After bantering a bit, we decide to return to our rooms for a rest before the dinner and dance take place in the evening. 
And what was it, four or five nights, I think? I want to say it was four nights. Uh, we start strolling through the stalls in the opposite direction, towards the direction of the castle. Buy a few more small things on the way, and I managed to get my hands on a rather nice emerald stud brooch for my mother. Oh god, that changed. <laughs> that seemed a little creepy. By the time we arrive back at the castle entrance, the ray turning to late afternoon, sun's golden shape gradually descending in the west. I almost said weast. Par I part ways with Arden, denying his request for me to show him my room, and hurry back up to the second floor. Uh, so if we stuck with him, would he come in our room? Just my appear. <laughs> uh, dumping my bag of miscellaneous purchases on top of my clothes trunk, I pull my boots off and throw myself onto the luxurious bed with a soft groan. Despite how tired I am from all the walking, strange tension won't leave my body. I won't go as far as to say it's a feeling of foreboding, but it's as if some sex sense I have is tingling rather it's all ominous. That bastard Franz's fault, making me all paranoid. I mean, it's probably for the best. Wallowing a leg, <laughs> wallowing languidly in my self-pity, uh, I sprawl out over the covers, nestling against my pillow and letting out a deep sigh. Sure it doesn't matter if I fall asleep since Silas will probably come wake me up again. It's pretty impressive that he managed to remember a single guest among the hundreds who must be here. The scale of a royal butler, I suppose. Nah, I'm pretty sure it's probably the only one he's ever interacted with in this part of the most, <laughs> if anything. So I close my eyes and try to catch a little rest. However, I can't manage to slip into more than a light dose tossing and turning from side to side. Either from lingering silent or apprehension, I'm too restless to fall into a deep sleep. There's been too much stimulation today for an introvert like me, damn it. Probably haven't talked to so many different people in years. <sighs> it's no use. Are we gonna talk to Franz? <laughs> he is, like, right next door. Opening my eyes, I grudgingly pull myself up into a sitting position, staring through the balcony doors into the evening sky. Part of me wants to go out and lean on the bolster, but I'd rather avoid a repeat of last night. <gasps> or we'll go anyway, because it's checking on us. As I sit on my bed, contemplating what to do, a knock suddenly comes at my door. I slide off onto the floor and stride over to open it, but hesitate. Yeah, good enough reason to hesitate. <laughs> it's probably just silence, but what if it's someone who's... Have some balls, man. God's sake. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Scolding myself quietly, I pulled the door open, although I'd take a little step back just to be safe. Wait, who's this guy? <sighs> For me stands a young man, probably a couple of years my junior. Definitely don't recognize him. Why is he staring at me like I just morphed into a monster? S sorry, sir. I g g got the wrong room. Oh, oh okay. Well, don't worry about it. Looking for someone in particular? J just Miss Celeste's? Oh. This stuttering wall perhaps cute at first is quickly getting on my nerves. Celeste, you say? I think I may have met her earlier. I didn't know she was in the same hall as me. I... I thought she was, but maybe not. Why is he... Uh, I guess he's just nervous talking, maybe. S sorry again. Right. Okay, I watch as he scampers off down the corridor, hastily examining all the room numbers. What an odd boy, he's either very shy or completely out of sorts for some reason. I wonder how he knows Celeste. I'll have to ask her the next time I run into her. Oh gosh, if somehow this kid's the killer. <laughs> if somehow he's the assassin, this going to be all bad. Maybe I'm never getting paranoid. <laughs> well, seeing as there's not much else for me to do, I might as well take a little stroll around the castle before I head downstairs. I stop my hands in my pockets and mosey around the hallway corner, making sure there's not an Arden lurking in wait. It seems to be clear, so I wander down the next hall with a relieved exhale. I make my way towards the general direction of the main hall, 
but with the occasional detour to admire tapestries and small alcoves decorated with paintings and plush chairs. There are probably a lot of interesting nooks and crannies in this place. After all, the king is known for his love of collecting things, including apparently collecting a bunch of foreigners who hate the Varison bloodline. <laughs> is that person over there or a statue? And the way they look very intent in whatever they're reading. Oh, no, no, no. As quietly as possible, I start to back away, praying not to be noticed. Wait, who is it? Shit. Dandy squeaky floorboards. Freeze in place that tall figure toward me. That's flame. Up, oh, yep, okay, it is, uh. Uh, I don't remember his name. Is yep, there we go. Linus. Looking to creep up on me again? <laughs> Goddamn. Talk about holding a grudge. Siding, it's probably. Siding is probably for the best to be polite rather than doing too much to get on his bad side. I clear my throat. <clears throat> Inquisitor, I was just heading down to the main hall. Linus' eyes glint behind his glasses as he closes the bug in his hand and saunters towards me. Hmm. I could have sworn there's a much simpler way to get to the main hall than through this back passage. Well, I was exploring a little, you know. It's a shame to have all this fine art and no one to view it. <laughs> huh. After a scornful laugh, he taps the finger on the unmarked cover of his book. Watching me suspiciously. Ah, this is gonna be bad. Uh, this is gonna be bad. With myself for what's undoubtedly an accusation, tensing slightly. I suppose I owe you an apology. An apology? What? For what? Tap the side of my head, wondering if my hearing gone bad. Last let out a huff in response, his eyes narrowing. I was. Perhaps excessively rude earlier. There was an unexpected occurrence this morning that had put me in something of a foul mood. Okay, it seems bizarre for him to be actually remorseful. Is he trying to make fun of me? Near my eyes at him slightly trying to nudge his intentions. Um. Sure, I guess we can accept it. Spectre or not, I doubt whether that really justifies his behavior. But he does appear to be earnest about his apology, even if reluctantly so. Well, let it not be said, I am an ungracious man. I was probably a little rude back then, too. Though not as rude as you were, certainly. <laughs> Do not push your luck, Varys. Let us put the matter to rest and move on. Okay, Linus. Okay. Don't get angry again. <laughs> Fingers twitch against his book. Not wanting to be hit or otherwise assaulted with a heavy looking toe, I concede with a nod Are of my you head. Heading down as well? Are Grand Inquisitors free to mingle and dance with us common folk? While my presence here is as a guest of His Majesty, I do not consider myself to ever be off duty. Fair enough. After all, it is not as if treasonous men stop being treasonous during pleasant gatherings. If anything, the risk is higher. Something tells me he knows what's going on as well. Despite his haunty tone, it's hard to deny that he really does take his job seriously. I suppose it's one of those positions that doesn't allow much time for rest. I turn then motions for me to follow him down the corridor, saying off in a brisk pace in the direction of the main hole. Catch up to a sighting glance at his severe looking profile, his eye constantly scrutinizing the world around him behind if those glasses. If you follow in your father's footsteps and wind up in his highness's ring of advisors, it is best we learn to tolerate each other. I mean, it might be best if you learn first, buddy, but whatever. <laughs> Pause for a moment, then his voice suddenly growing a little more hesitant. There are many in his circle who I find to be of questionable nature. But nonetheless, it is not my duty to speak against his decisions. I hope you didn't consider father to be of questionable nature. His eyes flicked down towards me sharply. 
Mita's gaze as best I can, even though the hawkish stare is quite difficult to be the subject of. He is a man possessed of exceptional perceptiveness. Enough so to rival my own. That is all I shall say. Oh, okay. I'll make sure to tell him. I'm sure he'd appreciate a compliment from a man like you. Do I sense sarcasm in your voice? <laughs> Need I remind you of our truce? We have a truce? I don't know there was a truce going on. Okay. <laughs> I purse my lips doubtfully. Truce or not, I doubt he'll be inclined to hold back from insulting me if I slip up somewhere. This man is vicious. Where are we going anyways? I just realized we've just been walking with them. Uh, we emerge at the balcony of the main hall where it seems guests are steer starting to gather in their formal attire. And also the girl from earlier, Celeste, was it? Sitting next to an older, slightly routed, rooted man chatting happily. Father, I wonder? The doors to the dining hall are soon opened by well-dressed attendants, and I walk with Linus into the rather magnificent room. Oh, is that the Grand Inquisitor? Who's that he's with? Are they brothers? Uh, uh, they do not look like anything the same. What's <laughs> marry a man like that, Regal? Sounds like the Inquisitor is rather popular. Does it make sense? He's quite young, but he already holds one of the most important positions in the court. After destroying potential rivals, will live to will live uh, will to live and crushing the opponents, no doubt. The superficiality of court never fails to disgust me. I long for the day when a man is judged by his actions rather than his outward appearance. Yep. <laughs> I hate to tell you this, but you'll be longing for that day until you die. If appearances <laughs> didn't matter here, we'd all be wearing burlap bags. Perhaps you should be the trendsetter, hmm? A burlap bag on your head would undoubtedly be an improvement. This guy's an ass. <laughs> Well, I set myself up for that one. Yeah, yeah, you did. <laughs> we get closer to the massive table, and it seems like there's no predetermined seating. Something unusual for an event of this caliber, but maybe the king wants a more relaxed atmosphere. Guests seem to be sitting down with their friends and relatives, and there seems to be a few blushing courtships in progress before even the soup is served. <sighs> Spot are an array seated. Wait, how long have we been going? Oh shit. Arrays. Uh, I spot are an array seated, looking rather uncomfortable and surrounded by what looks like a bunch of old ladies. Hansa, maybe? Grandmother definitely did pop out quite a few daughters, if I remember correctly. Okay, good to know. <laughs> There's no free thing around him, although it's not like I need another dose of art in again so soon, well, anyway. I assume there are individuals who would appreciate your company more than myself. So, this is presumably where we part ways. Turn to see Lance staring past me idly, his eyes following the certain skittering about with preparations. You already got a seat in mind? Not particularly. If I find one the view of the dining room I like, I shall politely request its occupant to vacate. Oh, he is an ass. <laughs> Smirks so evilly, a rather, rather sadistic glint shining through the lens of his glasses. Talk about the abuse of power. Well, you're far from my ideal dinner partner, but I don't see anyone else I know around, and I'd rather not be sought out by a certain lady from last night. That groans that. And groans that Sakurian cooing ply itself. All too vividly in my ears. Flattering. Said that correctly. Have you already been caught up in my suave charm like those admirers <laughs> from earlier? Do we get a choice here? <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh, we just sit with them already. You have about as much charm as a pile of bricks. I remark slight, silently to myself following lasses over to a vacant sea of seats. Set of seats. And also, before I continue, uh, I think I've been recording a little longer than usual. Uh, so anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, go to the like button. If you want to see more be done by the next part, go to the subscribe button. 
guy on the other side. Maybe if anyone needs my that we even care it's sketchy. Maybe say something in the comments below. And other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Comrades?